In today's video, I'm going to go through how I would set up automation on a fresh new world. This is a world I'm just creating, so I need to install all the modules first if they're not already installed on Foundry, and then enable the modules right away. Before we get to that though, a quick note. If this is your first time using Foundry, use the core program first and get comfortable with it before you start adding in modules. Especially for you as the GM, so you know what you're working with, but also for the players so they can become more knowledgeable and know how to use these systems in place with Foundry before jumping in and trying to figure out modules as well. All right, with that preface out of the way, let's go ahead and get started. There are a bunch of modules I'll be adding in. I'm going to be putting them down in the description, the list, and I'll be explaining why I'm adding all of them in, just like a sentence or two for each. But let's go ahead and get started right away, adding them in, and then after I've installed them, create a new world. You create a new world the same way you would always with the system you want. I'm going to name mine automation. And same thing here, automation. And I don't need anything at this point other than just this basic setup. So I'm going to jump ahead and we'll be looking next at our enable module screen. So here are all the modules I have activated for my world everything I need to get the automation running, as well as a number for effects and simple organization, as well as some assets as well. So immediately after enabling the modules, the first thing I actually do is go to my compendium, which my compendium is nice and organized now thanks to compendium folders, and I import a scene just so I don't have to work with a black background. But this is just personal preference. The scenes that I'm looking at right now are all free, and they come packaged from the Mad Cartographer. So just, if you like these, like the look, really easy to grab. And as a note, there are a ton of free assets that are offered through Foundry modules. So if you don't like the look of these, there is something available for you. And these packages come with walls and lights and everything. All right, so we'll be looking at this as I work. Next, we do need to go into our settings and go to configure settings. And the first ones I'm going to be changing, notice how this also looks nice and neat thanks to tidyui. The first thing I'm going to be changing is MIDI QOL. This provides all of basically most of the automation support I need. And if you don't have this box checked here, enable rural automation support, you won't be able to edit the crucial part of this module, the workflow settings. This you can look at and see if there's anything you need to change, but the majority of things are within this part here. I am going to go through some of this quickly. If you want a full image of my settings, I'll be putting it down in the description below along with the list of modules. But let me point out some of the crucial ones right now, especially crucial when it comes to other modules. So template draw, auto target, this means that whenever you make a, a fireball spell or anything that has an AOE effect, when the template goes onto the map, everything within the range of that template will be targeted. I use this because I find it incredibly simple for the players to automatically target everything within, but you may not like it. When an item is rolled, automatically roll the attack if there is one. This means that if my player clicks the long sword item on their sheet, it'll automatically roll the attack rather than a separate dialogue box popping up and asking them. But you do also need to have this one selected as well, either attack rolls, damage rolls, or attack and damage. A lot of this relates to privacy as well, so you need to decide how much you really want to show to your players, how much you want to keep hidden. Here though, require targets to be selected before rolling. This is where you decide whether you want to force automation upon your players or you want to allow them to roll without having to target. Because if you check this box, it will not let your players roll any attacks or anything unless they target. So I don't have it checked because I'm pretty forgiving. If my player forgets to target, I'll just add the damage manually. Again, going through a lot of this very quickly. Um, this one here, I use Let Me Roll That For You, which is this little dice icon here. 
this basically creates a pop-up window and asks the players if they, whenever they need to make a save, they will have it pop up for them. We'll close that for now, though. Yes, 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 yes. Oh, I like to have the damage card as well shown. Here, auto-apply item effects to targets. This one is crucial if you are also planning to use DAE. Dynamic active effects, DAE, allows you to have spells that will actually create effects on the character. Like, for example, shield. Shield gives plus 5. Bless gives plus 1d4 to attack and plus 1d4 to saves. If you want to use spells that actually have an effect in the game, check this box. It doesn't actually hurt to check the box as far as I'm aware, so just... It's okay. If you're this far into automation, just check this box and move right along. Same thing this one with this one down here. This will be used if you plan to use, uh, especially for like any animated assets. This is a good box to check because it adds in a separate macro at the very bottom of every item. I'll show it off later. And we'll save that. And at that point, that's pretty much it for the workflow settings. Like I said, I'll put a picture of my completed one down in the description in case you were not able to follow along. The next settings we are going to change are within the combat utility belt. So we just click this box right here. And as we can see, there are a lot of options here, but there are even more options that are hidden behind the computer. We are going to use that right now. So the first thing is you wanna select your gadget, select enhanced conditions, check the box enable enhanced conditions as well as if you only want the D, D status symbols and not the default ones that come packaged with foundry select this box as well and then you can press save and as soon as you enable the enhanced conditions on the right hand side you will see the condition lab which looks like this right here i've already changed mine from default to custom and looking at our custom status effects we can see that they look like the D, &D ones that you would recognize, such as blinded, charmed, concentrating, and more. You can even add in your own custom ones as well by clicking add row. If you want to add in like a rage status or a bless status or a shield or more. And these with these status effects, you can also add in active effects as well. So that if we have the blinded status on my character, all attacks that they make will be at disadvantage and any attacks made against them will be with advantage. I've already set up one, so let's take a look at that right now. If you want to see how you would do this for the rest of them, I have a full length video on that, which I'll put in the description down below. But this is what it looks like. You use MIDI QOL flags to set up how the attacks are handled. And you can do this for all of your status effects and make your own custom ones as well. So the next thing I would do is I would take my actor file here for JB2A actors, and I'm actually going to import this into my game. The reason being, a lot of these are really useful for me. So I'm going to import that right away, all of it. And then we're going to go ahead and pick one starter hero to play around with their character sheet and show how we can use our DAE spells that are brought in via DAE SRD. Let's go ahead and bring in this druid. I'll go ahead and port that starter hero. So now if I go over to here, I can see a folder with all of the JB2A actors, as well as my single druid. All right, looking at our druid here, we're going to go ahead and pretend that the druid gained the spell Bless. And again, we're pulling it from the DAE SRD, bring it onto the character sheet, and if we take a look at it now, we can go through edit, effects, and we can't edit the effects directly here. If we try to, it'll give us a warning, but we can go to the top at DAE, and if it already has an effect on it, we can go here and edit. So we can see that the bless is actually going to add 1d4 to all saves and 1d4 to all attacks. To use this though, we need to actually target a creature and cast the spell. But before we do that, let's go ahead and add in one more thing. Let's go to DAE SRD items, and we'll add in a belt of hill giant strength, because our character got very lucky. So if we go to here, we can see the belt of hill giant strength. 
You go to attributes, everything looks the same now. But as soon as we actually go ahead and equip it, equip and attune it, then we can see our strength jumps up to 21. So with the DAE items, you can actually acquire whether it's, you can set up whether it's equipment only, equipped only, whether it's attunement only, or whether it's equipped and attuned. So that is there. Let's go ahead and bring in another actor so we can test the Bless spell now. All right, to actually make use of the DAE Bless spell, we need to have our actor on the scene, target the character or creature that we want to apply the effect to. In this case, I am using Easy Target for Alt left click, but a player can just double right click. And then at the top, I'm going to use the Token Action HUD and select the Bless spell right there. Now, this won't show up unless you've actually prepared it on the sheet, but it is already there. I'm going to cast using a spell slot. And as soon as I cast it, because we're using the DAE version, we'll see the status icon appear right next to it. And let's go ahead and pretend that we are the Acolyte here that has the Bless on them, and they're going to attack. Go up to the top, attack with a club, go over to my rolls, and I can see the roll 1d20 plus 0 plus 2 plus 1d4. So it came in as intended. Now at the top, I also have the calendar weather as that is paired with about time. Bless is a timed spell. And if I let it expire, we can see the status icon goes away and the effect will go away as well. The 1d4 is no longer there. The final change we are going to make today is we are going to add in a visual effect to our Bless spell. So we're going to go ahead and click Edit Spell. Go to the bottom of Details, and where we see On Use Macro, we're going to fill in this line here. And we're going to fill it in with a line from one of the macros from JB2A. For today, I'm just going to take the examples that they already have, but you could take these and edit them very simply on your own and change what effect is being used. So I'm going to go to Edit Macro, take the name of this, and fill it in right there, no quotation marks. Enter, close, and close. And let's test it out. So we're going to select our Druid, target the Acolyte, go to Spells, and use the Bless spell again, but this time we should see a visual effect appear. Like so. And that will be it for today. So hopefully this has helped at least give you a bit more understanding and how you can set up automation in your game. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them down below. Like I said, a lot of the information I'm putting in the description today, but I'm happy to answer everything, any questions you might have. Thanks everyone.